Today the angel tells the women to not be afraid, to come and see for themselves the evidence of the resurrection. And Jesus in the Gospel of John tells Doubting Thomas to put his finger through Jesus's, the holes in Jesus' hands and touch Jesus' side. Jesus wants to give you evidence and basis for your faith. Jesus wants to invite you to come to him and get to know him much, much further. In a way, it's, it's sort of like a marriage. Um, when you get married, uh, you're not asked to have no doubts. Um, I don't know, did anyone get married with no doubts, even just a little? I didn't see a hand raised, but, so I take it as there's some doubts, right? Even just something small. I mean, you believe things are going to go well, of course, um, but there could be a little bit of a doubt. I mean, you don't, you don't know the future. Um, you know, I don't know how long you've known your fiance. I have no idea. And, but you do know your fiance to a certain extent because you dated, you fell in love, you get engaged for a period of time, but you know you're never totally certain what it is like to be married to that person unless you commit and actually do it. Unless you actually face the altar and say, I do, and be married. Only commitment can increase the certainty of your faith in your marriage, even if you have doubts. And the same goes for faith in Jesus. Only commitment can increase the certainty of your faith in Christ, even if you have some doubts. And uh, you do know, of course, that in the Bible, the church is called the Bride of Christ. Because when all is said and done, you know, when the world is done, there will be a wedding banquet in heaven. A big celebration where Jesus meets the Bride of Christ, the church, face to face. So in light of the resurrection, in light of the good news of knowing that the resurrection is not only possible, but it's true, whether you have doubts or not, the question for Easter Sunday is, can you take another step of commitment towards Jesus? Can you commit in a more wholehearted way yourself and your life for our Lord Jesus Christ? And as our church celebrates its 44th anniversary, can we take another step in commitment and let Jesus show us more and more who we are meant to be? Now, you know, people can commit to a church for many years, I mean, especially this church. Um, but how many can actually commit to Jesus and everything that he says? What I mean is, can you commit to what Jesus says, whether you like what Jesus says or dislike what he says? Unlike Facebook, we actually don't get to choose. We know that our faith is secure on the basis of Jesus' resurrection. We don't need to choose. He is our Lord and King. Everything Jesus says is like, right? No matter what it is. So what kind of Christian is Jesus calling you to be? The humility that Jesus shows, is that a like? This like? Like? Like, right? How about his call to generosity? Like? Like? How about worship? Like? Forgiveness? Ah, there's no more like. At the beginning there wasn't. Um, I'll do something harder. Loving your enemies. <laughs> yeah, like. Um, yeah, so all of that are those, you know, like, or are they a challenge to you? If it's a challenge, the power of Jesus' resurrection can change all that. Because if God can raise a person from the dead, we can trust that God 
can change our hearts. It doesn't matter how old or young people are. You know, are, are there any doubts that Jesus is inviting you to address? Are you in need of more peace or purpose, direction? Even if you have known Jesus for many, many years, can you take a further step of faith and commit to knowing him more? It's the only way to getting something to work with to change our hearts and our lives if we are to be open to his invitation. That's why this church has been here for all these years. Our church has been accepting his invitation again and again and again. And he continues to invite to faith and trust in him no matter how many more anniversaries we celebrate. So, uh, he is risen. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I praise you and give you thanks that you have given me such joy such faith and such hope in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, my Redeemer. Please forgive me of my sins and shortcomings. Forgive me for not fully following your ways, even if I know they are the right ways. Let my life be the proof and response to the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Let my words and actions my love and service reflect a transformed heart. Let my commitment grow stronger in you as I take the next step of faith, however that may look like. This I pray for the sake of our living Lord, Jesus Christ.